Appraisals or valuations play an important role in the real estate world. In today's lesson, I'll give you the three most common appraisal methods and show you how to talk about them. Pay close attention and take our quiz after you finish the video to see how well you know your valuation vocabulary. Hey everyone, welcome to Real Estate English Academy, the place for real estate experts to boost their English. I'm Jenny and I've been working as a translator and English teacher for large international real estate companies for over 15 years. I'm excited to share my language and real estate expertise with you on this channel. Let's dive right in. First, I'd like to point out a basic differentiation that we need to be aware of. The term valuer is most commonly used in the UK, while the term appraiser is common in the US. So a valuer prepares a valuation for a property and an appraiser prepares an appraisal. Same meaning, just different words being used in different countries. In this video, I'll be using both. To make a profit in real estate, investors need an idea of the value of the property they're planning to buy before going through with the deal. They need to find out how much money they can generate through capital appreciation or rental income or a combination of both. You could basically say that the present value of a property depends on the economic benefit that property will bring in the future. The purpose of an appraisal or valuation is to determine the market value of a particular property as of a specific date. Typical value drivers include demand from users, utility of the property, which refers to how useful a property is for those using it, scarcity, which refers to the number of similar properties in the region, and transferability, which describes the ease with which the property title can be transferred. Appraisals are generally prepared when a property is being purchased or sold, or as the basis for taking out a loan for financing or securing a mortgage. Appraisals can also be required for insurance or tax reasons. In some cases, properties held as assets in a fund are reappraised or revalued once a year so that the Transaction Advisory Committee can monitor the fund's gross asset value or GAV and provide up-to-date information to investors. It's important to remember that evaluation is an estimate and not a determination of value. Okay, so let's have a look at the most common valuation methods. Sales comparison approach. The sales comparison approach looks at the sales prices of comparable properties and takes that as the basis for determining the market value of a property. Factors such as location, size, or time of sale are also taken into account. This method is commonly used for single family residential properties. If you invest in a house or an apartment, you're going to look at what prices similar apartments or houses are going for on the market, and especially if you're planning to renovate and then sell, maybe how quickly buyers are purchasing. Have you ever used this approach before deciding to buy a property? If so, put the words real estate in the comments below. Cost approach. The basic idea behind the cost approach is to determine whether a real estate investor would be paying more for a property than it would cost to build an equivalent. With this method, value is estimated by looking at the cost of construction. You then subtract depreciation, which is the reduction in the value of an asset with the passage of time, due in particular to wear and tear. Then you take that amount and you add the value of the land to get your result. The cost approach is most commonly used in appraising new or planned property developments. Income capitalization approach. The income capitalization approach determines market value based on the amount of net income the property will produce over its remaining economic life. According to this method, market value is equal to the present value of future net income. The key advantage of this approach is that it effectively estimates the expectations a typical investor has when investing in income producing property and looking for a cash return on their investment. Okay, that's it for today. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. 
and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to get notified when our weekly video is released. And check out our free quiz to test your knowledge evaluation methods. See you next time.